Hi there, it's Dr. Joylin Sparkles and welcome to your power hour. This is your time to put what's on your mind, on my mind, and we will have some real talk here because this is a no fluff, no bullshit zone where we're gonna talk truth, strong talk, conversations that matter that are actually going to change the world. That's what we have here. That's what I am happy to uh, be talking to you about. Today we are, we've got a loaded topic and that is family. Because it's a little bit complicated and charged at any time of the year, but especially at this time of the year with the holidays and extra family time. Lots of uh, old stuff coming up that will also be happening with the solstice and uh, some of this churning and, and dredging up some old stuff. And hey, we've grown up some, we've awakened some. So some things are not adding up and we just can't tolerate them the way that we used to. And that can oftentimes be a sign of health, but that doesn't mean it's comfortable. So let's take a look at all of these things. And I'm gonna share with you, uh, I said a case study, that would be me, because I'm your Cliff's Notes about what to do, what not to do, uh, so that it can be easier for you. Because that's really all I want, is for it to be easier for all of us, because it's time for us to be happy to actually enjoy this life and all that comes with it and to put family in its place, which can be hard because what we've been sold isn't working for us because it largely means we're excluded from our life. So how do we include ourselves, not kill our families, not exclude our families necessarily and, and have some peace and joy and still like ourselves and the holidays. So, all right, I will just start. And I've got notes all over the place because this is a interesting subject. So, family is complicated, all right? Now I said on the title, it's a tragic comedy because comedies is a very loose definition. We're talking about like Greek comedy where happy ending, ha ha ha, you know, great. Or is it a comic tragedy where sometimes funny things happen, but by and large, it's sort of a sad ending. That's really sort of like a yes, that's what my family is, is both of those things. And waking up can be uncomfortable because just like waking up, you are starting to become aware of things that you weren't previously. Now, where we will sometimes be gas lighted, gas lit, and kind of doubt ourselves and our own sanity and our own awareness is wondering, was it always this way? And a lot of it is a lot of these patterns that we are now recognizing are long standing. They kind of have been that way for so long, but we just weren't aware of them because we used to be so immersed in the system. This is the thing about codependency. It is normal until you start breaking out of it and then seeing how many tendrils and, and little fingers it has on every part of your life. So many of us are part of codependent systems to where that's by and large, our families have this codependent thing built in. And now we're waking up to it. And so these things, it feels weird. It feels different. A lot of times there's a lot of pain. That pain actually isn't new for most of us. It's just that we're actually been aware of it because now that limb, that piece of our heart, that part of our childhood is now waking up. Now I wanna say what's interesting about that is don't go thinking, well, I don't wanna wake up because it's just painful. The reason that you can feel it is because you're no longer in it and there's a separation of you from it. So you can feel you are aware of the edges. And the same thing's gonna happen on the other side of the spectrum when you say, I'm gonna heal and I'm gonna be vibrant and I'm gonna be patient and I'm gonna be calm and I'm gonna be happy and I'm gonna be confident. 
at first you are going to see such a difference between you and that energy that you can tell it's not you. It doesn't, it feels weird. So you can tell when you're being it and when you're not. And then you'll keep going and say, oh, I think I'm doing something wrong because I, I can't tell anymore. Because you're becoming it and there is no separation so you don't feel those edges. But we're just in the reverse process when we're waking up and breaking out of old systems as what used to feel normal, natural, and there was no separation. So we were just a part of that intricately messed up system. And now we're breaking out of it, we can feel it. And so it might be acutely painful for a bit, okay? And so you just stick with it and keep going and knowing that breakthrough and freedom is actually available on this other side, we just have to keep going. So let's talk a little bit about how, what that looks like, what might be uh, involved in this. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit, I cannot believe it's only been one week since I talked to you guys because what's happened in that week is our family Thanksgiving got postponed because of COVID, so it was this weekend. So me and my sisters come from the east and the west to meet at my other sister's house, and my parents flew in from the Midwest. And wow, okay, that was uh, interesting, an experience. And I was excited actually to see everybody because my life has changed so much in such a short amount of time. And moving to a new place and coming out of a painful relationship and seeing how much healthier I am, that I was actually willing to give everybody a, like, a fresh set of eyes and just being like, hey, how it was doesn't have to be how it is. And let me just go with no expectations and just see what's available. And so I was actually looking forward to it. And so the first night that I was there, it was like a dream. My sister had made sugar cookie dough, so we're making sugar cookies. There's hustle and bustle in the kitchen. People are talking sports. Like, it's just fabulous. And Saturday morning, I wake up to the same, and my heart is just so happy. And then it took a nosedive, okay? Because then all the newness and, and novelty, because we don't get to see each other that much, wore off, and the old stuff started showing up. But again, I was aware of it. And it was like, oh my God, what is happening? And what ended up happening was, and I'll tell you the, the snippet, there's, there's a couple of them. One of them was my dad, uh, so my niece was there and she's freaking adorable. And my dad has just recently gotten onto Facebook and so he's on Facebook all the time. Like there's a, a junior in high school, my, my nephew was there and my dad's on Facebook more than him, okay? Like you can't pull him out of his phone. And so my niece who's seven is tugging at his sleeve cause she wants her grandpa's attention. And he's like, leave me alone. And he's trying to shake her off and he goes, I'm gonna pop you one if you don't. And I was like, excuse me? You're gonna threaten violence to a seven-year-old for tugging on your sleeve and asking for your permission or for your attention? That's not okay with me. And number two, I know for a fact you don't actually mean that, that you wouldn't actually do that to her. So why would you say that? And so I spoke up. And I said, what are you saying? That is not okay. I don't remember my exact words, but I was like, what is that? That is not okay. And he was like, oh, what? She knows I'm joking. And I was, how would she know? And all of a sudden it flashed before my eyes. That has been my marriage. He would say he loved me and then say that it was my fault. I got called names. He would say that he loved me and then he would say, you need to find your own right home. Um, and how was I supposed to know what was true? Because that's what I had grown up with. That sarcasm and, and love being paired with pain, love being paired with you're on your own, love being paired with, I don't wanna be with you right now was so normal. And when I started to get healthy, that wasn't normal. And now I saw black and white where it came from. And it also showed me that even though I said I was going in with no expectations and I was totally an open mind, I wasn't, I had expectations. I did and I still do. 
about what parents should be, about how they should act, that they should be more mature than me, that they should be interested in their children's lives, that they should be loving and actually loving, not you annoy me when you try to get my attention and I don't want to give it to you because I know he does love her. It's, it's, she's one of like the three human beings on the planet he actually has a tender spot for, okay? Like, so I know that he does, but that was not loving behavior at all. And so I, I see all of this. And then with my mother, I see that there's nothing. No, she, nobody, call, she won't say a word. And when I spoke up and it was clearly created some tension in the room, that she kind of like, you could see her energetically and actually physically shrink. And then knowing that our personalities are just different, my mother does not like conflict and I don't shy away from it quite to that extent. So that if it's me who says something, that's not a big deal and that's not really abnormal at all. But that there was no, um, yeah, that's not right or I wish he wouldn't do that, nothing. Just, oh, I don't say anything because it won't change him. Oh, I've already tried, that, that won't change. And so the other thing that I saw then was everything is outcome driven. You only speak so that people change. And if they don't change, that's evidence of your failure. So you just resign and don't say anything. And I will say this again, because I know it's going to come up. I've written it in my notes twice. That shit only happens that way on sitcoms and movies, okay? Where somebody says something and the other person says, oh my goodness, you know what, you're right. The first time that they say something. When people change, it's often because they've heard something or they've hit their head up against something over and over and over and over. And a lot of us know that when it comes to families and marriages, sometimes it doesn't even happen until we remove ourselves from the situation. We tried so hard while we were in it and we could not actually create the space that we needed for ourselves. So we actually just had to peace out and then the change that we were looking for happens. It's like a kick in the pants, but it's just how it goes sometimes. And it's painful and what happens with families and with people that we love and we're close to, we interpret that as meaning something about ourselves and our value and our worth and that's where we go horribly wrong. And for a lot of us, that's where an immense amount of pain is that actually we can let that go and the pain will go away because that isn't true. So sometimes we really have to be clued into what is the pain because if it's a heaviness, a sense of contraction, a feeling of obligation and I can't move and I can't, I can't, I can't, that's actually heaviness that is indicating that your perception, your thoughts, the way that you're interpreting the situation is way off base. When it's actually just pain, as far as there is heartbreak here, there is grief and sometimes mourning, it does not have a narrative and it will hurt, but it doesn't necessarily feel heavy and hold you in place. So that's one thing to remember. But I did leave that brokenhearted and also with an awareness that I did have some uh, really strong expectations that I had not let go of. So, because there actually is awareness, my parents are not interested in their children. Because nobody, they did not ask about what are you doing for Christmas or how is it in your new place? These questions just weren't asked. They just talked about when they had been to California. Okay, so there's, there's that. And the divorce is not new, but it's not old. And nobody asked, hey, how are you doing? They see me, they smile, they give hugs. They see that I'm not crying, so all is well. We don't have to ask about this. And then when I have to go up against my dad, who's I see now the, the family bully, the patriarch, who's going to hold on to his spot by force, that when I challenge that, and, and I'll, say, I'll say this, and even though I know it's not true, nobody asked, hey, are you okay? Because when you're David going up against Goliath, do you think David wasn't shaky? 
That shit's scary. You're challenging a big system. It would be nice to know you have an ally. And I did, but it wasn't the other parent. Okay, so there's some expectations about what parents are supposed to be. So that didn't. I also see the emotional immaturity of my parents. They actually both, when challenged, they pout. And they create and make a situation so uncomfortable for other people that other people actually just start to cave and fold and say, okay, you can have your way. This happened multiple times over the weekend for different things. And, and so I see this and I'm like, oh my goodness, this overreactivity that, that I've been working on to have emotional mastery, the, the thing that I see so many of my clients working with as well, when, when you've been out of the system and you're not in it, you can see it for what it is and be like, oh my God, this is where I got it. This is where I was learning how to handle intense emotions. And these two models say that you pout and you make it uncomfortable for somebody else so that they change so you don't have to. And that's what I used to do. Until I actually was like, this isn't working for me because then I'm always pouting, stressed, super reactive, crunchy, and and more and more you might see that the people around you who aren't your family aren't playing your game. And you get called on your stuff and it becomes more uncomfortable and, and you either have to change or be alone, isolated, you know, or go back to your family and you know that that's not really what you want to do either depending on how your family is, okay? So, so I'm seeing all these things, like I'm gathering all of this material, okay? And so it's uncomfortable. This is a charge. This is a heavy charge weekend. Okay. But here's the silver lining. And I want to tell you for sure it's hindsight. That's 2020. Cause sometimes we do have to be out of the system, out of the forest to see the trees. Okay. And one of the blessings is I am aware I'm feeling this. So I know there's separation. I'm not in this anymore. The freedom is inevitable. The freedom that I've been looking for, the emotional mastery that I've been looking for, it's in my grasp. It's already happening because if it weren't, I wouldn't even be aware of this because this has been in place probably for most, if not in my entire life, okay? I also see, wow, I'm growth oriented. Our value systems are just very differently. I'm no longer trying to manipulate other people to get them to do what I want to coerce and force that way, I'm actually growth oriented. And when I see that I've hurt somebody, I actually want to repair that. And when I see that I have dismissed myself, I want to repair that. And I'm also seeing that, oh, this is really heartbreaking. And oh, there's a tendency, look at this narrative. I can analyze them. I can do this, I can do that. But I also was aware I can choose my response to this. And blaming sure as shit is not going to change anything. It's not going to make me feel any better. It might let me feel a little bit superior, but at the end of the day, superior never feels better. And it doesn't change anything. And then you have to spend all of your energy trying to convince the other person that you're superior and they will never agree. So superiority, inferiority is a losing battle. So I picked that one too many times. That one I know it doesn't work. Okay. But I also knew that this was painful, I was heartbroken, but I did not want this to ruin everything that was to come and to miss all the other things. That, it wasn't the only thing happening. There was other good stuff happening and I have things to look forward to and I didn't want this to color the whole experience. So how do I put it in place so it doesn't own me? So I was looking at things a different way and also acknowledging all my awareness and choice points. And this is so different and beautiful and I'm finally acknowledging this so I want you to know that this is possible if you keep going and move through the pain and move the pain and ask the pain what it's got what's the message for you and so some of the awarenesses that I have is emotional connection is not available at this time with my parents. It may never be. I don't know because that is a timeline I don't get any control of. That's their choice. That's their free will. But emotional connection so I can have a relationship, but it's going to be superficial. So I just get to choose. Is that okay for me or am I going full stop? No more. 
I'm still working on that, okay? To be continued, I haven't, I haven't released that data. And then I can choose my response. So it hurt. Having that awareness that at this point, emotional connection is not available with my parents. And that hurts. So I let it hurt. I cried, it's a five and a half hour drive from where I was to where I had to go. I cried for about the first 90 minutes of it. I sang sad songs. I let my heart speak because I can't make it go away. I, can't, I couldn't make it not hurt. That hurts. That shit hurts, okay? But I also knew that I didn't want it to be the entirety of what the weekend was or the entirety of my life or any sort of defining thing. So letting it flow and letting it go. And then I had the gift, what I have in place for myself, as I knew this was going to be a little bit like this, but I had a coaching session set up for me for early this week so that we could process this so that I could get some perspective so I could have somebody reflect to me, Hey, this is what you said your priority was. Hey, get back in your body. Cause yes, I'm having somebody help me with this. This is how I keep practicing, how I keep moving forward. Get in your body. Your body's got the awareness for you. And here is some magic shit. And this is what I'm going to help you do when we work together. When you go back into your body, your body is present all the time and it is picking up so much information. 400,000 pieces of information per second through your body. That is your subconscious. That's how much information it can process. Your brain, only 2,000 pieces of information per second. Still hella fast, but not nearly like 400,000 pieces, okay? So this is where a lot of information is. And we can kind of go back and ask it. It's almost like it's a computer. Hey, what was I aware of in that moment? And what I have done and what I did do to some extent is I went back to that wounded child spot and the question that always comes up is, am I even here? And what, am I invisible? And another one that I've now recognized, what the hell was I thinking? I know on some level I chose these people. What was I thinking? So I've interpreted myself as stupid and I have also interpreted myself as invisible non-existent, unimportant, because I couldn't have any influence. But then I saw that's 100% wrong. Here's why. When I challenged my dad, he got super freaking defensive. He was all hot and bothered under the collar and telling me to leave him alone. And you know what was weird? Two things. Number one, that's exactly what my ex-husband used to do. Oh my goodness, I married my dad. Their personalities are so different. I did not think that that is what had happened, but I apparently, just like we do, this is what most of us do in marriage, at least often to start, is to try to heal a broken parental relationship with our intimate partner. To the extent that we're aware of that, we can break out of that, so it does not necessarily always mean that you have to end the marriage or the intimate relationship. Uh, but it will continue to get harder because that's not actually the relationship you're in is with a broken parent. It's not, it doesn't work. Okay. Putting that out there. But I saw this and I was like, oh my goodness. But what I was aware of was, whoa, yeah, I've got fucking impact. Did you see how angry he was? If I was invisible and if I was non-existent and if I didn't matter at all, I would have been dismissed. There would have been no defense because there would have been nothing to register. I had been looking at it how my mother had been looking at it to where I thought that if I said something, then he should change because that's how most of us are programmed to know that you're influential depends on someone else's behavior and whether or not it changes. But what I actually saw was that one of the things was I spoke up because that shit's not okay in my domain. And I am finally willing to have and own and dominate space. I get to be here. I have healed to that level where I will have space. And for somebody to try to bully a seven-year-old and also display such a lack of integrity with their word, that shit doesn't work in my space. And I called attention to it, not to shame him. Not even necessarily to have him change. That would be like in the ideal perfect world. But it was actually just to say, I'm here and that stuff doesn't fly in my space. 
And when I said that, there was a pretty big reaction. So I'm not invisible. I am not not influential. I do not not have impact. Listen to all these double negatives. That's where I had been going wrong. That's what I've been telling myself and it wasn't true. That is where so much of the heaviness and pain had come from. My misinterpretation of a situation. So looking at things a different way, going into your body and actually getting the information is super important. We'll change a lot of things. And then the other thing, we also have to validate what else was going on. I got validated. My sister, the mother of my niece, didn't know this was going on. She was having a side conversation, but when the reaction came and all the attention got called to that area, she looked at me and she said, thank you. I didn't hear that going on. Thank you for saying something. So there too, I can't go back into this victim and say, I'm all alone. I'm not. I had me. I spoke up for me. I claimed my space and I didn't shrink and say, oh, it's not going to change anything, so I won't say anything. That's codependency. And that's what I'm no longer a part of. I showed up. Woohoo! That's awesome. My sister, actually the external validation that we chase all the time, actually was available in real time. That doesn't always happen. We can't do it for that reason. But somebody actually looked at me in the eye and said, thank you for speaking up. That was important to me too. That's amazing. Number three, more and more, I know I've got angels working all around me because you know what my dad does too. He's got a guardian angel who knows his heart is hurting because only somebody whose heart is hurting would behave the way that he's behaving. And a lot of what the awareness that I got on my drive home is you can only love and meet someone to the extent that you can love and meet yourself. So the reason that emotional connection is not available with my parents is because they are emotionally disconnected from themselves. They actually dislike and some of it even hate themselves to such a dramatic degree that that's some of the pain that I feel. I wish so badly they did not feel this way about themselves but it's something that they refuse to acknowledge. So for me to try to point it out, it's actually abusive. It's something that it's not up to me to change because that's their choice for how to interpret and behave and, and believe about themselves. But I, um, but I don't have to take it personally. It's not about me or my worth or whether or not I'm visible or existent. It's about how much they're willing to, to be with themselves. And now I just recognize we're willing to do that on such a different level because I want to be with me loving myself unconditionally, abiding with myself, knowing what healthy love is so that A, I can have it because this other stuff, this half-assed love that's paired with pain sucks. It's painful. It's gross. It hurts. And when I give it to somebody else, they hurt. It's awful. I want something better than that. So I'm curious about it. So I am my own crash test dummy. So I'm going to figure out how to do it, what it looks like, what works, what doesn't work as far as getting it there. And then I'll have it to give. And I do. And so I can be a model for this is how you love yourself. This is how you show up for yourself. This is what you can do to expand your emotional capacity to not personalize things, to get out of reaction to stop chasing external validation and outcomes. I'm here for you and I know that it's possible for you. And so what I've got is such a strong confidence now, you can borrow some from me until you're that confident in yourself. But this is what I'm after. This is what I'm going for. This is what I'm creating in the world. And I love it. I love that about me to where there's actually some celebration about me of like, wow, I like what I'm choosing here. It's, and it's not about superior inferiority. There is a different level of consciousness. There is a differing, huge, differing degree of badassery of what we're willing to face because there's some ugliness in me. I got some heavy expectations about what parents should be and do. And I had to look at that. There is some real attachment to wanting this love to come from those individuals specifically because they should, because they got this title of mom and dad of having to let that go and saying, let's redefine family. What does it mean to me? And who do I wanna be? 
as a person, as a family member. I can't be the one who constantly pokes at them, who now that I know I've got impact, if I use that to get a reaction, that makes me an asshole. If I am aware of the pain that they carry and it's painful for me, but I try to change them and get them to change so that I don't hurt as much, that makes me an asshole. Because if, if I try to make them look at something that they really don't want to and they're not ready to, I'm a jerk, I'm the abuser then. So having to look at all of this and be willing to change how we're operating and really changing the story so it's really, if they don't ever ask about me, I can be interested enough about me. And I will also start to surround myself with other people who are. And actually the place that I live now is such a warm, generative, loving space. They've made me a Christmas stocking even though I'm so new here. We're sharing food. like. They're const like the conversation is uplifting. There's lots of compliments that come without criticisms. Like it's just so very different and it's because I was ready. So this is possible for you. I'm gonna take a drink because real quick. One of the final things that I wanna say is that when it comes to family, one of the big problems that we have is we get locked into this dynamic but you are under no obligation to be loyal to any person or any old version of yourself. You can change just because, just because you want something different, okay? And also recognize that nobody has the loyalty or obligation to you. They can also change at any time. So that if you are refusing to do your work, if you're saying I'm gonna wait till later, if you're saying I don't have the money for it right now, even though I know I'm emotionally reactive and I gotta get my shit together and oh, I can see how that's damaging my relationship. If you continue to do nothing, you might be the person that gets left. Because somebody doesn't have to stay and put up with that even if they know it's because of trauma and because you're hurting. They don't owe you anything. It's up to us to show up for ourselves. And when we do that, we reap the rewards. We get more of ourselves. We get to count and we matter. We get to experiment and play with our voice. We get to start recognizing and acknowledging the impact that we do have, that we've always had, that we've always ignored because we interpreted it as something else. And we get to heal and reconcile and be models of new ways of communicating and loving each other that are more effective, that are whole, that are beautiful, that don't have all these strings attached. We aren't triggered as much. We don't feel so overwhelmed and we don't feel like obligated to people or situations. There is so much freedom here. And this is what I want you to have. I would love you to give this gift to yourself for, for Christmas. To be next year, be having a new way of living. And there are so many options. I'm just one of many and I've got three programs all kind of going on at once. We've got happiness brain training to where you actually create your new identity and then we're gonna solidify that through the program so you know this is who I am. We're training your brain to see yourself in a different way. There's the six week get unstuck and happy as fuck challenge where you're really starting to understand the process of change so that you know how to go about doing that in any area of your life. And then there's a the 90 day relationship or model where we're working one on one because this needs some intense interaction, some really personalized attention because it's old, it's steep, it's just at the moment where it's just gotta go. I don't wanna live with this another minute. That's what, there's so many, you can do all of them at the same time too. Uh, here's a little secret. I put you in happiness brain training when you're in the 90 day relationship or model. I just don't tell you, you just get a bonus, but now you know. But I want you to have this. So what are you waiting for? The answer is nothing. Just talk to me. I'm easy to talk to. I'm here with you guys every week. This is what our conversation is going to be like when we talk about what's going on for you and what it is you're looking to create in your life. And let's see how and what program is going to work the best for you because I want you to have this level of freedom to where your family is not the, def the, the limitation of you, the definition of you, or or the biggest deal in your life anymore, that you actually are, and you get to create it, and actually it will start to change and move around you in ways that you cannot even predict now, so no matter how smart you are, don't think you know everything, okay? All right.
Anything else? Yes. One more thing I'm going to say, because I know other people are talking about it. The paradigm is shifting. I know I have somebody who's, I'm so sick of hearing about the divine feminine, but shit is changing. Doing it by yourself is not impossible, but it is fucking slow. And it's not really working the way that it used to anymore because of how the collective is shifting. We are meant to be here for each other. And so having a support, having collective and community actually helps you to sustain the movement and get some traction so that you can go farther faster and maintain it instead of continuing to hit your head against a wall. Now, if it's your soul's desire to be different, it will. Some way, shape, or form, things are going to shift and change for you because that's, you know, in your heart and you're gonna have it. But it can be faster, it can be easier, it can be a lot less energetically and emotionally draining when you have support. And hi, I love doing this. I love having these conversations. I love seeing you light up when the light bulbs go off and you get this piece of, oh my goodness, this is me, look at me showing up, I'm so awesome. I know you're awesome. And I want you to know that too, the way that I do. So I want to work with you. So definitely get a hold of me. Let's set up a conversation and get you started. Prices are going to go up in 2022. I cannot help inflation. That's just the cost of running, living, all of those things. But if we talk before the new year, you're going to get locked in at the prices, even if we have to start because I know how life goes. Holidays are hectic. So even if we start in the new year, you get locked in on that. So don't procrastinate. Don't wait and don't put yourself and your future off anymore, okay? And we can be family, okay? Because we're gonna change what that even means, all right? And it's just gonna be where love lives. And let it be here, let it be in you. And until next week, I'm loving you madly. And I'll talk to you then. Mwah.